there will be any cooperation between Pakistan and United States in counterterrorism field? And do you expect that Americans can put pressure on Kabul administration to act against these terror groups? I uh, have my doubts if Americans can do anything in dealings with the Taliban government hmm. in Kabul because uh, uh, they don't have any relations, they don't have any recognition uh, of the Kabul regime and the two sides don't have any diplomatic uh, interaction. For the recognition of Israel by a number of countries in the region, including Saudi Arabia, do you see the revival of these all initiatives, all such efforts that Israel could be recognized by key Arab allies uh, of the United States, including Saudi Arabia? Yes, you see, let, let, let me remind you that the Abraham Accords, yes. the so-called Abraham Accords, which uh, provided for recognition of Israel on the one hand, that was initiated by President Trump in his first term. Mr. Trump in his victory speech said that he will end all American wars. I don't think that there is any scope for ending the conflict in Ukraine unless Putin is forced to do so. And Putin, I don't think, is in a, in a, a mood. He's to not going to show flexibility. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear viewers, hello and welcome to Program Inside in Videos English. Finally, American presidential election concluded today, and the Republican presidential candidate, Mr. Donald Trump, who was contesting the presidential election for the second time, finally won as 47th President of the United States of America. He is president-elect, and in January, he will take uh, oath of his office. So after uh, getting being elected, uh, there are a number of issues which have emerged that what, what will be his foreign policy towards a uh, number of world regions, including Middle Eastern region, what will be his policy towards China, what will be his policy towards Iran, and of course one of the biggest challenges that how President-elect would deal the Ukrainian war. And there are a number of other challenges, including the domestic economic challenge and a number of other issues to discuss this all, particularly on the foreign policy front. Today, we are joined by very seasoned former diplomat and investor retired Ali Server Nakvi Saab. Ali Server Nakvi Saab uh, has served for a long time in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, also in uh, Pakistan's different diplomatic missions abroad including as an ambassador in Jordan and high commissioner to Australia and to a number of other countries and, and maintains a very close look on international affairs, Middle East and uh, other issues and matters. Ambassador Elisa Velekwisa, a very warm welcome to Program Insight in Renews English. So how, first, uh, tell us our viewers uh, that uh, around the world people were expecting this particular result. Do you think uh, this particular election is as per expectations of the American voters and the expectations of those who were keeping a very close eye on uh, U.S. presidential election? It was exactly in accordance with their expectations. Keeping in view the competition was quite tough. Yes, it's very interesting that uh, the predictions and all the assessments were that it a very close race and it was not clear who would get the presidency, who would win the elections. Uh, uh, and therefore, there was a degree of uncertainty about uh, whether Mr. Donald Trump would become the president and would win the elections. However, as you mentioned, the, he is faced with a whole lot of problems, both in uh, respect to foreign policy as well as a domestic policy. True. One thing is clear that Mr. Trump is uh, has the overwhelming support of the American people, and because of this strength of his, I think uh, he will be able to steer the 
domestic and the foreign policy uh, component of his administration in the uh, direction that he wishes to adopt. In foreign policy, his position in regard to the Middle East is very clear. He is as uh, all other American uh, candidates, presidents, whatever, in the case of Mr. President Biden. He is great. He supports the uh, security of Israel. That's the first and foremost thing about Middle East. However, in the case of Mr. Trump, I would anticipate that he would try to end the fighting. And in ending the fighting, the only thing that he is possibly likely to do is to bring about a ceasefire. The first thing is to end the fight and end the attacks, uh, the Israeli attacks on the civilians of Gaza and the Palestinian population. So I think he will try to bring that to an end. As regards the broader issue of two-state solution and the rights of the Palestinian people, I think uh, we should not expect too much from uh, President Trump because he is uh, on the side of Israel. And if he is on the side of Israel, then we will not be worried about the the rights and the uh, the the fair treatment of the Palestinian issue and the people people of Palestine. Regarding Russia, Ukraine, he has said wow. that if he had been president, there would have been no uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. So he will try to uh, probably persuade. President uh, Putin uh, to bring it to an end. But even there, the people of Ukraine are not likely to give up any territory. And if that happens, then uh, Putin will not be satisfied. So that is, again, a, a very difficult situation to handle. In regard to South Asia, he uh, has a very strong uh, relationship with India at the personal level as well. Prime Minister Modi. Therefore, he is not likely to uh, change the stance of the American administration in, in regard to India. They have a strategic partnership with India and they are going to uh, uphold that partnership. However, in this regard also, I, I think that uh, President Trump might try to initiate a dialogue between India and Pakistan. Because he is uh, that kind of person who can persuade at the at the uh, informal level uh, the other side uh, to uh, take some step which might be helpful. On domestic policies, President Trump uh, has made this position clear that he has a conservative position, a position where he will support a total. Stop, uh, not total stop, a very uh, restriction on uh, immigration. He will also uh, try to bring back many industries to the US and thus uh, make the job opportunities for the American workers. Ambassador Elizabeth and Pisa Binar has been on the radar of the Republican Party and Mr. Trump uh, during his previous tenure. So, as you said that uh, Mr. Trump is a staunch supporter of Israel, keeping in view his uh, strong support for Israel, how America will be dealing with an Iranian issue? Yes, that's a good question. I think he also has a very strong position in regard to Iran, and he, he is the one who revoked the uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, with Iran, hmm. which would have led to some uh, easing of tension in regard to Iran's nuclear program. Uh, so I think uh, Trump is going to be very hard in dealing with Iran. And uh, I don't think that he will try to make any, uh, any conciliatory gesture towards Iran. And uh, he will keep Iran uh, uh, on the outside. Similarly, he will be very strict and very tough with China, with which the U.S. has a rivalry. 
and uh, he is going to uh, impose tariffs on Chinese goods, and he is going to cut down on Chinese uh, uh, investments in the U.S. He is going to stop uh, Chinese uh, uh, playing an important role in the economy. So uh, I expect that the relationship between the United States and China is also going to be uh, very badly affected by uh, Trump's administration. Ambassador Saab, so when PTI was in power uh, almost three years ago, PTI led government enjoyed good ties uh, with the Trump administration. And there have been uh, meetings between the then Prime Minister and Mr. Trump. So currently the political administration and administration in Pakistan is different from and we are, we are witnessing that Trump is returning to White House. So in the days to come, after two months, how would you like to see the relationship between Pakistan and the United States? Keeping in view past good relations between PBI and Trump administration, um, there are a lot of expectations from the workers of a particular political party that Trump may intervene. So would you like to tell our viewers that is it that possible that United States President will directly intervene into Pakistan's internal political matters and which it will get released a particular political prisoner? Yeah, that is the key point you, you made, that uh, whether the Trump administration would directly interfere in Pakistan's internal matters. I think Trump will not interfere in Pakistan's internal matters. And despite the pressure by the Pakistani community, the diaspora, as it is called, uh, <coughs> that the administration should exert influence in pressing the Pakistan government, A, to lift uh, restrictions on uh, Mr. Imran Khan, and B, uh, to uh, 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 persuade or to urge upon the government uh, to uh, deal with uh, the, the PTI in a fair manner. I think th these things are not in, likely to be in his agenda. However, I think uh, the only thing that he might do is that he might uh, press uh, his ambassador to pursue these points with the Pakistani government and uh, in an indirect manner he can uh, try and bring up and put up pressure and he will definitely put up pressure somehow in the background ambassador elizabeth agwisa uh, last week pakistani prime minister wrote a letter to us president biden on release of pakistani uh, citizen afia siddiqui from us uh, custody afia siddiqui is currently in the us prison uh, facing more than 85 year sentence Followed by this particular thing, there was a development that uh, Attorney General of Pakistan also told Islamabad High Court that a high-level committee would also visit the United States of America to pursue the issue with the U.S. Administ administration. How easy it is for government of Pakistan to get Dr. Afia released, keeping in view new political developments in United States and Republicans coming into power? You see... Uh, Dr. Afia Siddiqui is, uh, 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 has been convicted under U.S. laws. Laws, and, exactly. Uh, many, uh, many of these uh, laws uh, uh, require a sentence to be served. And she, as you said, she has 85 years of sentence uh, on her, which is uh, very, very, you know, uh, uh, long. Very and, harsh uh, sentence, long and harsh, she exactly. She may not even survive, poor thing. So it's very sad. She's a Pakistani citizen, and we must try to uh, uh, seek her, uh, you know, relief. Now, whatever it is. Now, uh, the government of Pakistan has made the effort and has approached the U.S. government. But uh, the U.S. government has... Uh, uh, their laws that they must abide by. I think the only way this can be solved mm -hmm. is by a political decision by the U.S. president, nobody less than the president of the United States, to uh, uh, to hand over 
Dr. Afia Siddiqui to Pakistan. And uh, uh, this is possible under, under the uh, practice of uh, exchange of prisoners and uh, uh, bilateral treaties that exist. Uh, otherwise, it would not be possible to seek any relief for her. And uh, that is very unfortunate because she is a Pakistani citizen. Ambassador Nikwi Saab, uh, you said that on India-Pakistan, uh, United States may initiate uh, some efforts and bring both countries on the table. Another grave issue which Pakistan is facing is uh, the menace of terrorism. There are still safe havens of different militant and terrorist organizations based in Afghanistan. And, and the terrorists uh, who are based over there, they carry out uh, uh, terrorist attacks inside in Pakistan by crossing over the border. Pakistan time and again have told Kabul administration to act against these uh, terror outfits. Terrorism is a joint, is a common enemy between Pakistan and United States. What do you expect under the new American administration that there will be any cooperation between Pakistan and United States in counterterrorism field? And do you expect that Americans can put pressure on Kabul administration to act against these terror groups? I uh, have my doubts if Americans can do anything in dealings with the Taliban government hmm. in Kabul because uh, uh, they don't have any relations, they don't have any recognition uh, of the Kabul regime and the two sides don't have any diplomatic uh, interaction. However, hmm. I think it is uh, uh, an issue in which the Americans support Pakistan's position and they support the control of terrorism and the stopping of terrorist groups and uh, their activities uh, uh, as much as possible. There, I think the you know, US government can help Pakistan with uh, some uh, uh, assistance in regard to technology, some equipment and some uh, uh, other means of uh, controlling the terrorist activities, countering terrorism, and thus uh, trying to reduce the problem. But uh, the Americans don't have much much uh, uh, scope of dealing with uh, the Afghan government and with Kabul. That's right. And you said that uh, you don't see that role uh, from the American side uh, dealing with the Afghan Taliban. Coming to economic security and defense cooperation between Pakistan and United States. So what do you think of the, under Trump administration? There will be significant improvement in economic and trade ties between Pakistan and United States, including in the field of defense and security. You see, let us not forget that the Trump uh, stand is that uh, America is first. Um, what mm. is best for American interests is what governs his uh, thinking. Now, uh, under that format, Pakistan cannot get much concessions in trade because mm. Pakistan has been trying for a long time to get uh, enhanced uh, textile quotas. But the American producers of cotton in the southern states of Carolina and in Mississippi, they are uh, against giving any uh, relief to foreign exporters. Uh, so in regard to economic relations, uh, the United States can help us in energy, in agriculture, and in uh, science and technology and such fields, which uh, if uh, Trump wishes to uh, initiate that program, they can do it. In defense cooperation, I think mm -hmm. the uh, American administration uh, is not likely to uh, make uh, much headway because of the Indian veto. You see, the new element, the new element now uh, is that India and the US have a strategic partnership. In the past, this was not the case. It's not likely to have defense cooperation. Uh, it's not likely to, uh, uh, for Pakistan and the US to have defense cooperation the same way. So 
I don't think there is much scope in that either. Uh, Elizabeth Agbi Saab, last but not the least, uh, you have strong eye on Middle East, particularly that is your special area as you serve as Pakistan's ambassador in the Jordan. While Republicans were in power last time, Mr. Trump was in White House. There have been hectic efforts by the Trump administration for the recognition of Israel by a number of countries in the region, including Saudi Arabia. Do you see the revival of these all initiatives, all such efforts that Israel could be recognized by key Arab allies uh, of the United States, including Saudi Arabia? Yes, you see, let, 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 let me remind you that the Abraham Accords, yes. the so-called Abraham Accords, which uh, provided for recognition of Israel on the one hand and uh, very strong uh, uh, economic relations between the countries of the Middle East and uh, uh, Israel. That was initiated by President Trump in his first term. And uh, half his family is Jewish. His son-in-law is Jewish. Uh, his uh, One of his earlier wives was Jewish. So Trump is actually very much in favor of Israel. And therefore, he will try to get the recognition of Saudi Arabia uh, uh, for Israel. But let us not forget that Saudi Arabia has recently said that it will not recognize Israel until there is an end of the uh, Gaza country. Last Ambassador Nekwisa Bez, Mr. Trump in his victory speech said that he will end all American wars. One war is in Ukraine. The other war is between, uh, between Palestine and Israel that it is uh, being supported by United States and tensions are on rise in South China Sea. So in the next four years, what do you think? Will it be possible for Mr. Trump to maintain peace, to withdraw its troops, to end its military bases in different parts of the world, to end war in Ukraine? I think uh, in the first place, I don't think <laughs> that Trump would go for any armed conflict with China, even though he will take a strong stand. But like in the South China Sea, which you mentioned, I don't think <laughs> there is likely to be a breakout of hostilities. As <laughs> regards Ukraine, I think uh, there is no direct American uh, uh, involvement in Ukraine in terms of uh, the conflict itself. Uh, mm. So Trump will try to persuade President Putin uh, to uh, find some way of ending the war. And Putin will demand his pound of flesh, as they say, uh, that, mm. that he must have some territory yeah. of Ukraine. He already has taken Crimea yeah. and he would want some parts of eastern Ukraine. And that Ukrainian president and Ukrainian government will not accept. So I don't think that there is any scope for ending the conflict in Ukraine unless Putin is forced to do so. And Putin, I don't think, is in a... In a, a mood He's to, not going uh, to show flexibility. Yeah. And Thank you uh, so much indeed, uh, Ambassador Elizabeth uh, Nekwisa, uh, uh, for your uh, time uh, for Program Insight in V News English, for very insightful discussion on U.S. presidential elections and what would be American uh, foreign policy under Mr. Trump and a number of other issues. Despite your busy schedule, you spoke to Program Insight in V News English. Thank you so much once again, and dear viewers, goodbye, and Allah is from studios.